I was waiting for that live to go through. I kept thinking and thinking, but here we are live. Welcome to the Comfy Nest with Grace. My name is Grace. Today we are doing craft kit number 11. All that means is that this is the 11th one. It's been a year that I've been offering these each month. I offer one craft kit a month that um, you can grab if you want to and do with me live here on the page or and on YouTube or not. You don't have to. Uh, craft Therapy Club members always get first chance to order these because I usually have just a limited quantity of them. So they get first chance to order with their discount and then um, anybody can grab one. And there are about six of these left. Um, so if anybody wants, I'm going to create it now. If you want this kit, I'll show you what you get in the whole kit. Uh, if you want the kit and then to create your own, you absolutely can order this. Like I said, I have six more of them left. I, I meant to grab that link for you guys so that you could um, grab it. So give me a chance to do that while you're all coming on. And I hope you'll say hello when you get here. I do love to chat with anybody who's here hanging out with us, whether you're here on YouTube or here from Facebook or in the Craft Therapy Club. I'm broadcasting to all three of those places. Um, no matter where you're coming from, I still want to hear from you and know that you're here, know that you're hanging out with us. Uh, it, it just means the world to me to get to know more crafty chicks who like to create for joy. Simply just creating for joy without worrying so much about being perfect or having any rules. We're just creating for fun. Okay, there's the, the kit link. I was able to find it. Hey, Lori, I just sent you a message this morning, didn't I? Good morning, Miss Lori, our newest member, one of the newest members to the Craft Therapy Club. Um, we had two new members join. I sent a private invitation to those folks who are on the wait list. I'm not, I'm not putting the invitation link out to the world, just to those who have been patiently waiting on the wait list for us to get our stuff together. We are re- kind of reorganizing what we're doing and we've created a community and a place off of social media where the content will live and where the community can gather just in case something happens in other places like here. <laughs> so just in case, I want you to still be able to reach all your fellow crafty chicks and be able to access all of, we do basically two things. We create regularly, I teach techniques, I, I organize and plan the workshops with templates and supply lists. Um, so we do that and we do a lot of fellowship activities. So this includes project swaps, napkin swaps. Um, we're doing a craft box relay right now. We're gonna do a journal on a journey inside the group. So we have lots of activities that you can participate in optionally if you want to. So it is in that way, it is the true essence of a fellowship club. And um, we'd love to have any of you join if you want to when the doors open again. Right now, the waitlist folks are the folks who are um, have been invited to join. Okay, so let's see. Who's here this morning? Kimberly is here and Mary is here. Good morning, good morning. I love all your chipper, cheery greetings in the comments. Hey, Jenny, how are you, friend? I'm so glad you're here. Who's who's grabbed this kit already and is planning on making it? Um, obviously, you can make it together with me now if you have the kit already. If you don't want to purchase the kit, scrounge up what you have around your house. I am a huge fan of using what you got. So scrounge up what you have around your house. I'll show you the things that you would need and you can create with me. Or like I said, there are six of these kits left. So if you want these particular things, you can then grab the kit. Um, I gave you the link in the comments. Good morning. Oh, it's a rainy day in Houston, this person says. I'm not sure who it is. Oh, goodness. I, I hate not knowing <laughs> Who you are, and it's just a it's a StreamYard thing. I'm using StreamYard to broadcast, so I don't get to see everybody's names. Only if you've given StreamYard permission for me to see your name. So whoever you are, dealing with the rainy weather, <laughs> hello and welcome. Hey Leslie, there's Pat. Pat, I've not seen you in a in a while, my sweet friend. How are you, Pat Stipes? Good, good to see you here. Welcome back. I feel good. You know, my husband asks me every morning, Missy, like, how are you feeling today? I'm like, I'm good right now. But like literally by midday, I'm done for the day. I only have, if, if you know anybody who has a chronic disease and who explains their energy level with the spoons theory, I would refer to that. I only have so many spoons a day and once they're gone, they're gone. So taking a shower, washing my hair and then drying it it uses up a spoon. Like I'm not going to have a lot of energy come, come dinner time. That's usually what happens. Sometimes I have to get in bed for a couple of hours in the afternoon <laughs> before I can get back to my day, but I have a very busy today, day today. So say a little prayer that Grace's spoons don't run out 
before I get to all the things that, that I'm doing. I feel good now. I feel I'm not uncomfortable right now. So thank you for asking, Missy. Um, like yesterday was a, yesterday was a, last night was a tough night. I was like in double over pain. Like I could hardly walk. It was bad. I don't know why it's bad. It's worse some days than it is others. But listen, chronic pain, chronic disease, it's no joke, friends. <laughs> Take it seriously. It is no joke. Hey, Christina, you know what? I don't share. I share a lot more in the craft therapy club because it's private. It's a small, tight knit group of like minded ladies who we get to know each other really well in that group. So what I say in the public arena, like here on YouTube and on the Facebook public page, it is definitely a little scrubbed down or a lot from what the the ladies here in private even the facebook subscribers who subscribe to the hub that is like nobody else sees it just the ladies who have subscribed to the hub so i don't share everything in public i'm it's not that i'm not willing to share it's just it's it's private so it feels a little <laughs> a little um vulnerable to share everything out there in the world so that's one thing and i don't want like this is we're having fun here. I don't want to weigh you down with my, <laughs> my daily pain and chronic problems. So I, I, I try to be mindful to not fill your ear with that stuff too much. But I'm always happy to share, especially if it helps somebody else. Like my journey, if it helps you realize that you're not the only one dealing with chronic fatigue. You're not the only one who's exhausted by midday or in pain. Some of us are in pain. You're not the only one who is a creative who has those physical or like even like emotional mental limitations, but we can still create and have fun. So if my message inspires you or helps you to get there, I'm happy to share. I just, I just don't want to like weigh anybody down. That's what I ain't sure. <laughs> Jenny says, I hear you, my friend. That's why I missed the ATC, a pain flare up. Oh, I wish I could take it all away. Jenny, I wish I could take it away for everybody. I really wish I could. Thanks, Leslie. She said, I'm really so happy that you're good right now. It's no joke, girl. It's no joke. I know you can relate. Yeah, Sharon, how is she saying, I feel your pain? So this is interesting because the more that you guys share with me in reaction to what I share, when you say, oh my gosh, I deal with chronic pain too. It actually really does help me to understand. Well, first of all, to know I'm not like on an island. Um, there are a lot of people dealing with crud like this. And when I know that a lot of you, the people who hang out with me here on the page, deal with this stuff, it really does help me to know, I encourage me to keep sharing. So please, if you are so inclined or you feel moved to, don't be afraid to share your experience. You are welcome here. And I will always encourage you to take care of yourself first. And part of that caring for yourself and self-care is giving yourself the gift of creative time every day. If it soothes you, if it brings you happiness, if it brings you joy or contentment or just peace, I want you to have that. So 10 minutes a day, girl, give it to yourself. Give it to yourself. Hey, Callie, how are you? Oh, Catherine says she's been dealing with it since she was 59 and she's 79 now. So 20 years of it, Catherine. Girl, I'm lifting you up. Holly had three injections in her leg yesterday. Oh, ouch, girl. Good thing we don't paint with our legs. <laughs> not trying to make fun of you. Holly, I'm not trying to make fun. I'm just saying, good thing we still got our art, right? Because not everybody, you know, if you, seriously, if you deal with rheumatoid arthritis or you have like joint inflammation or difficulties, it can be hard to pick up a paintbrush or a pencil and play. I get it. Girls, I get you. I get you. I was not making fun of you, Holly, darling. I hope you like it's okay. Hey, Nancy, how are you, friend? Hey, Judy, welcome, welcome. All right, let's get to the project. This is basically what we're creating today. It's a little wooden project. It's a decoupage napkin on paper, and then underneath that, some you can add whatever you want, but you got some metallic burlap for your project today to put underneath it. So I'm gonna put that aside for a minute. That's what we're creating. The kit provided you two of each designs of these napkins. Now, I have a huge, a huge love of napkin crafting. And I napkin craft on a regular basis. Um, inside the Craft Therapy Club, we do two napkin crafts a month, one home decor project and one napkin journaling project. So um, we love it. We love to napkin craft. 
you're getting two of these, you're getting two of these. That one, it just has a different floral on each side. So see, you get choices there. This one is the same. All four panels are the same. This one has different panels. So you're getting, oh, it's just opposite direction. You know, you have the two directions of the one panel. And then this one, which I think this is the one I'm going to use because it's a little birdie. And you know, this is the comfy nest. And I just have always loved this napkin. I have created with it several times, actually. Um, I just love the colors. I just love the colors and I love, I love how pretty it is. I love that it's a little bird. Anybody else a fan of birdies? This is the one I'm going to use. So you got two of each. So you're going to have plenty of panels to share in a swap. If you're a member of the Craft Therapy Club um, and we do a napkin swap, you can share them or you can keep them and use them on, you know, like if you want to make one for you and a friend, you'll have multiple panels. So let's get this ready first. I'm going to open it up. And I only need one panel. So the way I'm going to handle this is I'm going to cut one panel out with my scissors to leave intact the rest of it. I feel like the napkins are easier to handle when you're storing the other three panels to use in the future. I feel like they're easier to handle when you don't separate the plies. So I'm going to leave these plies all together, put this back like this will go in my stash. And then here's the one that we're going to use today. And you can see it almost fills the entire board. Um, oh, let me finish showing you what the kit is. You get the six napkins. You get the board, which is a lightweight, um, you know, actually this side, you could put a project that is framed out. We are going to use the flattened side today. You got a couple of pieces of, I call this resume paper. It's that like creamy textured it feels thinner than printer paper, but not by much. I don't know the exact poundage on this, but you got two pieces of resume paper, I'll call it. You got your jute rope. You got a bit of gold infused, like metallic infused burlap to use. A bottle of glue. This is what was included in the kit and a glue brush, okay? I'm gonna save the glue brush because I have my own. I don't need that one right now. So let's just get everything ready. Our napkin, we're back to our napkin. Um, I've got it. It's the size it's supposed to be. I do want to separate the plies. I need to get down to the one ply. That means the top. So most of these napkins have several layers, as you can see. And start pulling it apart. You'll see it has several layers. When you buy napkins, normally on the back of the panel of napkins in the description, it'll say two ply or three ply. I've never seen four. They're either one, two, or three. If it says nothing, it probably is a one ply. That means it's an extremely thin napkin. So the absorbency is less, right? That's why they're generally less expensive. If you're using it as an actual napkin to serve cupcakes at a, you know, or tea, you're having a tea with friends and you want to have a little pretty napkin next to their plate um, of goodies, a one ply is going to be less absorbent than a two or even a three ply is the most absorbent. But we only use the one ply. We only want the top one with the decoration. So... I do, I use my spit. It, it really does work better. Some people like to use painter's tape to separate. Some people use tweezers. You find the way that works best for you and just get them separated. I usually lick my fingers. It's my project. It's not like anybody else has to deal with my, my licked fingers. Yep, here's another layer. So I keep doing this until you can see in the corner very slightly that this does have three layers, one, two, and the top layer three is the decorative part that we want. Okay, so, oh my gosh, that's what we need. I won't throw this out, I'll use it for something, girls. It'll get used, because that's the kind of gal I am. Now, I kind of like the torn edge look, and so if you want to achieve the torn edge look rather than the square, the super square look, um, you can grab any paintbrush, that will hold water. This one's probably too big. Any paintbrush, just, you just need a little paintbrush. Um, there are, oh, I'm gonna see if I can find one. There are little paintbrushes that hold water that you can purchase. I don't even have one close by. But I love to show you guys because I'm all about teaching you guys what the tools are that are out there. I found them. Here they are. You can buy these in sets. These are water watercolor paint brushes. So if you like to use watercolors, that's a, a particular type of color medium. <laughs> so, 
Oh gosh, when I start explaining them, I'm like, I better show them that. Here's a watercolor pan. You use these with watercolor pans, paints. You can use them with um, watercolor pencils or any re water reactive medium, like ink tense pencils, things like that. Anyway, they hold water in the barrel of the pen. When you squeeze on this rubbery section, the red section, the water comes out of the pen and distributes it on your project. Uh, it, it's a brush, really. They come with different tips. You can see this has a really wide tip. Be very careful when you put your cover back on that you don't squish your tip bristles, but let's find a different one. See, this one has like a regular brush tip, a smaller brush tip. So if you take, you can do this with a regular paintbrush and some water, but since I have it out, I'll use this one. We're just gonna wet the edges of this and tear away at them. I probably shouldn't do this on my, my wood, right? Okay, I'm just gonna wet the edges and I find the easiest way so I'm, square, I'm squeezing that to get just a little bit of water. I don't want to lose too much of those leaves up here. So I squeeze my edges and then I take a regular pencil on an eraser. And this is how I find it easiest to do this. And I just kind of tear away randomly at this edge because I want it to be torn. I don't want a straight edge. I want it to look more natural. So you're just tearing off a little tiny bit of the edge of that napkin and that just can go in the garbage. And so here's the difference between the torn edge, which looks really soft and pretty versus like the really straight cut edge. I just like the look immensely better. You don't have to do this. You could skip this altogether. I like to use the water with the eraser because it just seems the easiest to me, but you do whatever. Girl, I always say, girl, you do you. You do what makes you happy. Um, if you go around and you wet all of the edges at once, what will happen is they'll dry before you get to them, and so you'll have to re-wet them. So I try to do one or two edges at a time. I'll get to that last edge when it's time. I have a plastic table cover. This thing is a plastic table covering on my uh, table, so it makes it really easy with the water. I can just wipe it right off easily. And things just slide on this plastic surface so much easier than, say, if you were working on a wood table or a, you know, a plastic folding table or something. Okay, we have one more edge to do. We're gonna wet it with our tip. I gotta, I gotta squeeze to get a little bit of water, and you can see it's just gonna drip right on my hand there. So the nice thing about that is you don't have to keep re-dipping your brush into water. It just comes right from the barrel. It makes it very convenient. Not necessary. It's just one of those craft supplies that makes your life more convenient. Okay, we got that done. I may want just a little bit more off this corner. And then let's take a look at it. It's a little bit wet on the edges, but I do like the way it turned out. I didn't miss anything. So I'm gonna let this dry. And while this is drying, let's just put it aside and let it dry those, those edges. One, it, it'll be easier to decoupage it once it's dry. Really difficult to decoupage a wet napkin. <laughs> Nearly impossible. You would end up ripping it. So we need to just set that aside to dry. Meanwhile, we can take our board. Now, on my original, my board is dark brown. It's stained brown. You can use a stain on your wood to stain it. I just grabbed paint because... I don't know. I have it handy. I have stain somewhere around here, but I don't see, I mean, it's no real huge reason to use that. I got what I could use this as well. I'm going to grab a huggy wipe. It's dried out, so I'll have to wet it, but I'm going to grab a huggy wipe and I'm going to dampen it a little bit. And I'm going to grab my paint. I'm going to put it in this little porcelain dish. I did shake this bad boy. I haven't used it in a while. Let's get all those little paint bookers off here. Hey, Kim. You guys, Kim is going to be live inside the Craft Therapy Club. If you don't know who she is, she's a hand lettering, hand lettering queen. Um, and she teaches hand lettering. She's written a book on hand lettering and design. And she is our guest today. She's going to be our guest today helping us hand letter. Look what she's doing. The project that we did this month at the Craft Therapy Club included this pretty kitty 
um, template. I know it's kind of hard to see, but there is a kitty template there. Um, Pretty Kitty Dapper Cat was the name of our mixed media project this month. And Miss Kim is teaching us how to put this phrase with this design of hand lettering on our project. For those of us who are not efficient and good at hand lettering, she's gonna be teaching us. So Kimberly, I'm so excited that you dropped by. Hello, Joyce. Hey, Pamela in Oklahoma. Uh, someone said, I love the bird napkins so much. Love the one that you were using. I do too. Isn't it just so sweet? It's just darling. You guys, I have wanted to get, I'm just going to do this girls. Okay. This is like, this is, if you don't know, <laughs> this is the cheating way to stain wood without taking out stain. <laughs> I'm going up. I know we have stain in this house somewhere. <laughs> I don't need to go find it, do I? Look at it. It works, girls. It works. This is all going to get covered, remember. The majority of it is going to get covered with paper, napkin, burlap, like jute, whatever you want to put on it. So really, we don't have to worry too much about this being a perfect, perfect thing. In fact, if you really want your paint, I'm using acrylic paint here, to look like a stain, you don't want to put too much of it and you don't want to put it um, in, like you don't want it to be perfect, right? You want to see the grains of wood. We're just staining it with paint. We're basically staining it with paint. So you can see I'm going both directions. I'm just trying to cover it. You can see right here, it's darker than it is around the edges. And I kind of want it a little bit lighter. I don't want it too terribly dark. This middle section is gonna be covered by our bird anyway, but I don't know, let's just finish the job and say we got it done. You do it to your liking. As I always say, girls, you do you. If you want it super dark, do it super dark. If you want it a different color, you don't have to use brown. If you want it to be light green or light blue, or red or whatever, whatever you decide, you can do whatever you want. That's the beauty of creating is you get to decide, you're the artist. If you prefer a color, if you think brown's just like, nope, I hate brown, don't want it in my house, I'm not hanging that up, then do yellow if that's your favorite color or green or whatever you think looks best. Okay, that will take minimal time to dry. Um, I'm going to go around the edges just a little more so I see, you know, that part's rather light. I mean, I want it, I don't want it to be perfectly covered. You know, if you wanted it perfectly brown, grab a paintbrush, you'll use a lot more paint and just brush on your paint. But I don't, I'm really trying to go for a super thin coat here. Okay, now remember, the napkin is gonna come in and cover the bulk of this, the napkin, the paper, the burlap, we're gonna be covering the bulk of this. So you're really only gonna be able to see your edges anyway. So just make sure your edges are <laughs> the way you want them to be. That's what I would focus on. The middle's not, not as important with this project. Making sure I have good coverage all over. Oh, I missed a spot right there. All right, we're in good shape, girls. We're in good shape. Okay, we can put this aside, let it dry. I don't feel a huge need to top coat this. If you want to top coat this, use your favorite top coat. You could use Mod Podge top coat. You could use, this is a varnish and a top coat. So you could use your glue that, that you got in the kit and put a coat of that over it. It's not gonna have as much of a hard coat it's not going to have as much of a shine this one this one in particular is matte so it's going to blend really well with the wood so if you definitely want something over it, then take that step i'm not going to put something over this i'm just going to leave it raw just the way it is okay we are going to move on to decoupaging so you're going to grab it your piece of paper and we are going to put this onto the paper we're going to decoupage it onto the paper what i would suggest so you have a couple of options here I plan on having the paper stick out just a little bit from the napkin so that it's almost like a double frame. So I'm going to try to like 
put this right in the middle of this panel with about an inch here. You know, I have way more than an inch down here. That's neither here nor there. Just I'm going to put about an inch here so that when I'm done gluing this down, which is decoupage is the fancy word for gluing. Decoupaging means gluing it down with a decoupage glue. When I glue it down, I can then come around and tear. I have plenty of room of paper to tear around that in a way that's decorative and pretty. Okay, so that's the main goal. Oh, I see this little piece. I don't want this here. I don't know. It's just an extra little, this one too, just sticking out a little farther than all the other ones. Okay, so I don't want it to look perfect. We're looking for real distressed and um, really soft lines to it. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so we've got our decoupage glue. I'm actually going to be opening this one because I ran out. My jar is out. So this is the one that you guys got in the kit. It's an extra small bottle of the decoupage, the Pent Art decoupage glue and varnish. So you can use it as both your, your underneath and then over. Okay, I need a brush. Basically using the same brush that you guys got in your kit. Mine is much uglier and well used. You can see I always <laughs> leave it in my water way too long so it gets rusty. Just don't do that, girls. I would say if you can avoid doing that, please do. Okay, I'm going to grab some of that glue. I'm going to do this in sections because I think it's most manageable that way. Right, so I know just visually, I'm kind of eyeballing this corner, eyeballing this corner, so I kind of know where my um, my glue needs to sit. It just makes it, I don't need to glue the whole thing. I just need to glue underneath. Oh, seriously? Someone said this This is crazy. It only shows one person watching. How many people on in the corner, you guys, in the corner, in the upper corner on one side or the other of your screen, for me, it's on the left side, on my left side as I'm looking at it. There's, um, you know, the live that shows how much, how long I've been live. And then there's the little number that shows how many people are watching. Tell me in the comments. Mine says 50. Tell me in the comments what you think. I'm going to do this in sections, girls. So we're just doing one length at a time. Okay. We're going to put a nice even coat down. We're gonna lay our napkin on top of that. It really doesn't even matter if it's super straight because we're gonna be tearing this out of this panel. And then I'm gonna put a little bit on top to secure it down to the glue underneath. Okay, we got one inch done. Now we're gonna to continue to do that. We did the same process when we put that Santa rice paper on the tote bag. I think we did that, did we do that in November or December as our craft kit of the month? Okay, so now we can take this, whoa, we can take this and rest it here and then we're going to add our one inch of glue basically the the width of my brush here nice even coat a generous amount nice even coat and then i'm going to stretch my napkin and go over it with a very light very very light hand i'm going to go over it now you could pounce this down um, when we had the Napkin Lovers Club, those of you who were in the Craft Napkin Club, when we merged the two clubs, the Napkin Lovers Club members always got a pouncing brush in their, their kit, their, their welcome kit, um, with this glue. I'm a big fan of the glue. So I'll show you, we, you can, you can glue down your napkin immediately, which is what I've done these first two rows. Now, I'm being very careful. This is all wet right now, so I don't want to put this down on top because it may stick. So I have to hold the napkin up, but I can put glue down. And if you'd rather pounce your napkin into that glue, you sure can do that too. I love to show you a variety of ways to do it because you may have a preference. Like I really like pouncing my napkin into the glue. Well then girl, you should pounce. Okay, now I'm stretching the napkin to make sure I don't have a ton of wrinkles. And then you can just push with your pouncing brush your dry napkin into the glue below, okay? And you just have to leave it. And then once it dries, you can come back and put another coat of your top. This is, like I said, this is the glue, the decoupage varnish and glue. It's glue for underneath and it's a varnish for on top. I'm just doing both at the same time by using my brush. I'm putting a coat under and I'm putting a coat over. That way it's all done in one fell swoop. But if you really like the pouncing method, then you should pounce, girl, you should bounce. Sometimes it just feels good. It's like, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna 
work that out of my system on my pouncing brush. <laughs> Don't pounce too heavily because napkins are fragile. Use your rice paper if you have some frustrations to get out, but it can, it can withstand a good pouncing. Napkins are just a little bit more, just a little bit more fragile, I would say. All right, so keep telling me, how many does your screen tell you are watching us? Because mine says 50, but I'm so curious because, you know, the book of faces, as I heard, I heard my friend, um, Chris Hunter call it the Book of Faces recently, and I was just watching her and giggling. I thought that's really clever. So the Book of Faces can be wonky sometimes. All right, we got it all glued down, varnished on in one fell swoop, one action with your brush. Um, I'm not gonna go up to here. I haven't got any glue in there. That rusting is from me leaving my brush in my water for too long, so don't ever do that. I do it all the time, but don't do it. It does ruin your brushes. <laughs> um, I wouldn't want to get any rust into my bottle, but I did just, you know, clean off the brush into the bottle so that I could salvage as much of that thing as possible. There was nothing else dirty on that brush. Okay, this needs to dry, but I want to point something out really just like delicious to me. <laughs> if, if paper can be delicious, this is delicious to me. Missy, yours says, wait, Missy's screen says that there's five people watching. And Mary's screen tells her there's 50. What? What? I had to give you the what face. What? What's up with that? What is going on with the book of faces? Pamela's just showing 55. Oh, now mine is showing 62. Good gravy, friends. It's like a numbers, number jumble. Um, I am not finding the link to sign in to comment. Um, Debbie, I don't have that right here. Um, it's at the beginning of every one of these lives with StreamYard. Um, here, I'm going to show it on the screen. Let like li, blah, live viewers comments show up on StreamYard. This is an example. Click on the comment to show it on the screen. So there, this little comment is at the very here. I'm going to star it so it's pinned to the comments, and maybe now you can see it. So I think you just have to click on that link to show your name. 55. Mary is showing 55. Pamela is showing 50. Girls, what is up with that? We're napkin crafting. I'm glad there are so many people hanging out with us. It makes me very excited. If you're a napkin crafting lover, if you're a napkin lover in general, give me a shout out in the comments and let me know because I love to hear from you. Um, my, my membership group, the Craft Therapy Club, merged with my membership box. That was the Napkin Lovers Club. And so now um, we do our two napkin projects in the club every month. This is one of the ones we're doing this month. And look at, see, this is delicious to me. <gasps> do you see that? See where the glue is? How wrinkled up it is? How luscious? I don't know. I think it's luscious. I love crimpy textured paper. So I, I hope it, I don't want, you could iron that out if you really wanted to. If that really bothers you and you're like a super straight um, outcome here. I would say dry it completely. I would say get a piece of parchment paper and put it over this, put a, a craft mat underneath it or another piece of parchment paper and very quickly on the lowest possible setting with your hand not resting anywhere for very long, just quickly go over it with your iron and it will straighten it out or just put it under a big old stack of books overnight and that'll do it too. But I embrace the crinkle. I love crinkle. I love wrinkles. It's a good thing because I'm now 51 and I sure got a whole lot of those. I sure got a whole lot of those happening everywhere. Wrinkles and crinkles, just like my paper. <laughs> oh man alive. This morning I pulled out a, a silver gray hair from the top of my head. I was like, oh my word, that was really bright white or silver. I don't know which way you say it, but like oh it was like sticking up like straight up like saying to me taunting me like ha 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 <laughs> here I am and I'm not going away and I thought you know what you are going away I'm just gonna pull you right out of my head hey Shauna you're just watching today well I'm happy you're here what is Shauna did you report in how many people are showing as watching on your screen right now I'm just gonna touch this and Thea so we put glue we have paper and then we have glue, then we have a napkin, and then we have the glue and varnish. Same same product. It's glue and varnish. So there are four layers here. Two paper layers, two um, glue layers or varnish layers. And so 
you know, it's damp. We got it. We got to get it fully dry so we can work with it. Oh gosh. Holly says, just wait till you get those grays on your eyebrows. Oh, good gravy girl. Thanks for the warning. Thanks for the warning. They always come like right in here. And I told my sister, I said, I started by like, when they first started appearing, I was like plucking every single one I could find out. I told my hairdresser this too. I said, I had to stop because if I don't stop, I'm going to have a huge bald spot right there. <laughs> I don't want a bald spot. I'll take the grays over the bald spot any day. Oh gosh. For everyone you pull 10 grow back. Kathy, thank you for telling me that, Catherine. Oh, good gravy. I did not know that. If that's even remotely true, I will stop immediately. Missy says I refreshed and it's still saying five. So bizarro. So bizarro. Okay, we actually can put this aside for a second. It's still a little damp. Okay, you need to make sure it's dry. Okay, ladies, before we move on uh, with this particular thing. We need to make sure it's dry, but here we can kind of get a vision of what we're doing here, right? This is going to get layered. This is a mixed media project in every sense of the word. Okay. I gave to you in your kit, you got some burlap that is metallic. Okay. It's got like a gold infused. Oh, there you can really see it. It's beautiful. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to tear this apart a little bit. I'm going to try to tear it. So it's a little bit gnarly. I want it to be gnarly. No, it's not going to let me. I'm going to cut it. I don't want a super straight line. So I want it to look gnarly. So I'm going to purposefully wiggle and waggle my scissors. You can see my wrist is moving left and right, left and right. So it's, it looks more jagged. And then even beyond that, let's pull out a few of these pieces. Let's let a few of them hang out like my gray hairs, just kind of popping out, making themselves known. We are going to layer this underneath underneath. Now I don't personally, I don't want a full frame of burlap. I just want to layer it like we did here. You can see there's a little burlap here. There's a little paper. I put some paper underneath this one, but there's a little burlap here and paper. So you can, if you want it fully framed, you can go ahead and cut and layer, make a full frame out of this. I don't want a full frame. I just want a couple little pieces. I'm going to cut this one a little thicker. And I think I only need like kind of a square. Let's get kind of ragged on this side. I don't mind that this is straight because it's going underneath my paper. This jagged edge is what I want hanging out. And so to make it a little more jagged, I'm going to pull out a few of these little strands. This makes a big old mess in your room, but I do like the look of it. Let's pull out one more on each side. So see what it's doing? It's unraveling the edges. And I, I do quite like the look of it. So that's going to hang out one side. It almost looks like a little carpet with the, um, you know, the little carpets that you buy for your like kitchen or bathroom that have the little fringe on it. That's kind of what it reminds me of. So I have that and that there. Now you can continue to use this and just like wherever you feel like it, put a little bit underneath. It's going to go underneath your napkin, creating layers. You can also, like I said, on this one, I used paper. I didn't provide paper in your kit, um, but I think most of you have. You just tell me if I'm right about this. Most of you have a whole bunch of paper scraps in your stash. I have this whole purple bin. You've seen me use it before. Maybe I should change the camera angle so you can see me this way. You see my little paper scraps. This is how I organize my supplies. And my word, do I have a lot of paper scraps. So I have some really pretty papers in here. And you can do whatever you want. Just take a little scrap of paper like that's gold. It would make it super blingy. I don't want that. I kind of like rustic. This paper has glittered swirlies all over it. And I kind of do like that. And I have a good amount of that. I could use That's actually from the Pretty Kitty Dapper Cat project. That was a leftover from that. So let's use that. Let's see, I might have one more piece. I do. I'm going to use that because I really like the coloring with the bird. Okay, so I'm just going to take these scraps. We're going to make use of them. I'm a huge fan of using what you got, girls. You know that, right? And as Ruth, one of our members in the craft therapy club said, she said, my word of the year, it's actually a phrase. And she said, it's used more in 2024. And we adopted it. We were like, yes, Ruth. That is our craft therapy club, crafty chicks phrase of the year. Use more of what you got in 2024. We, we shortened it to use more in 2024. Now, the rugged edge is what I want to see under my project. 
I don't want to see any straight edges. So I'm going to tear it. I might want this underneath the burlap, actually. I want to layer it so that I can see it. So like, I don't want really to line up this edge with this edge. It's just too linear. We're going for kind of a messy, shabby look. So I want this full corner to peek out, but not be lined up with that corner. It kind of takes away from the aesthetic that we're going for. We want it to look imperfect. So that's okay like that, right? In fact, I could tear this in half. I wouldn't even need that much because it's gonna be, sh it's gonna be hidden underneath my paper in the end. I just need little snippets of these pieces of paper. So we don't want straight edges. We want rugged edges. So anywhere there's a straight edge, I pull it off with my fingers. Just tear like that. And that gives you a little scrap that you can use. So down over here, I layered the paper underneath the burlap. So here I could be a little different. And I really love this sparkly swirl that's here. I don't know if you can see that real good. Let's see if I can get it. Hello, can we get the light right where we need it works? Lights, camera, action. Can you get the light right where I need it, please? There it is. There it is. Now you can see it. Okay, so I'm going to layer that actually on top. So I have two in the corner, and then I'll probably put something in one of the other corners. I'm not sure. Um, this one has more, some dark spots. I think before I, I need a little drink of water. Hey, <laughs> little drink of water. Little break, girls. Hello, Miss Tammy. Lori, I'm so happy to hear that. She said, I don't care how many gray hairs I have. Girl, I love it. Help me adopt that too. Christina says, I'm 53 and I'm pretty much totally gray. I think, Christina, I'm right behind you, darling. I'm 51 and they're coming in pretty fast and heavy. <laughs> they're just coming in fast and heavy. Okay, it's not completely dry, but it's in pretty good shape. And remember, we're going to tear. I want like a double layer so we have the napkin and then just beyond the napkin i want to tear the paper so that we have another torn frame oh it's really wet right there i better be careful all right let me go in this edge and see if i can do it i want to tear the paper and i'm i'm a huge fan of the torn the distressed the scrappy looking we're going to make ourselves a frame with a napkin on top of the paper. And I want to see the paper, which is going to kind of frame out the napkin. Now, if I have to tear off more, I may, I may get this torn and say, oh, we need a little tighter. Then I'll do that. But let's get this first tear in place. And then we can start seeing, because I'm a super visual person, I need to see how it's going to look with the burlap and the paper underneath it. And we're just layering. meet in the middle here. There. This is still pretty wet, strangely enough. I must have, and that's the top. That was the first part that I did. I must have really gobbed on the glue. Okay. Keep tearing. Keep tearing. Very carefully. I would advise you, if you can, to just wait. Don't force this process. If your napkin and your paper are still wet, please just give it a chance to completely dry. Go get a cup of tea. Like I say, sometimes go let the dog out. Go read a few pages of your book and leave it be. <laughs> let it let it do its thing and dry completely or force it dry with a, a dryer. I need to pull off a little bit more because it's really tight on here. Um, and I want to be able to see my paper and my burlap. So I'm going to get even closer. We're going to make this frame of paper even smaller. It had about, I would say, not completely, but maybe on average, about a third of an inch of paper around it. And I'm going to go real tight now because it's just too much. Whoa, I really, really lobbed off some there. It needs to be small enough so that we can see our paper collage underneath. So just keep kind of ripping away. I do too, Debbie. Debbie says she likes the torn look. I do too. I'm a huge fan. This section is really wet too. Good gravy. The top. I must have really been glue heavy at that time when I was doing the top section. 
See, we're getting it down smaller, and I think I'm going to want more of that burlap, the way this is looking. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to tear a little bit more burlap. Maybe I can do a really like wacky shaped. Get it in another section here. I really like my little um, fringe here that looks like, remember I said it looks like a magic carpet. It's got the fringe all the way around it. So maybe I'll use this one up here instead. And then another chunk of this paper. Oh, I really want that to show though, I think. So I got to tear real close so I can get some of that darker flower on there. See that little dark flower? but I don't want the straight edge. <laughs> so picky, Grace. So, so picky. Okay. We're getting real close to the edges here, which is totally fine. We want to showcase both our collage work underneath. And yes, like that. Yeah, so we definitely need to get tighter. I guess I'm going real close to my napkin size here, losing that paper. There's a lot of paper here. I know it's hard to see because the background of the napkin is actually very similar, <laughs> really close to the same color as the resume paper that I sent to you in the kit. So down here, it's more noticeable, but there's a lot of paper on the edge here, like up to a half an inch almost in some spots. So let's tear that off. And you can see I'm not being super precious here. My paper's getting all crinkled and wrinkled, but I told you I'm a huge fan of that. Okay, so see how we can see now our paper scraps? I love it. This is still fairly wet, but I'm gonna go in and rip. You make sure please at home that you don't do this until it's fully dry because I don't want your napkin coming off of your paper and tearing. That would be very sad. Although it's not the end of the world. I gave you two pieces of paper and I gave you two or, um eight, six, six napkins to work with. So you have plenty of panels to work with, but still we hate to see things. Yeah, that's, that's a great size. Um, that's a great size because now we can see all of our little papers around the way. No, oh, I definitely want that there. I'm loving how the sparkle is showing off that paper. In fact, I love it even more than the sparkly burlap. So I think I will cover up the burlap there. We'll make that final decision in a minute. I'm going to take some archival ink and I am going to muck up a little bit my, my paper napkin collage, my paper napkin, my decoupage napkin. Okay. Cause I want it to look with these darkened edges. I would like those to be distressed. So I'm going to come in and lightly just flick on some darkness some darkness out if you don't have one of these little brushes or a special applicator you can use a foam makeup brush you can use one of those little foam daubers those little round daubers that they sell like everywhere <laughs> in any craft section of dollar tree or even you can get them in the paint section at walmart those little round daubers i've been using them lately we use them on the pretty kitty dapper cat but i don't normally use those daubers but i have one do you guys know what I'm talking about? Those foam-headed daubers. I'm looking for one. I don't. I had to pull them out of storage for Pretty Kitty Dapper Cat because I don't really use them that often. I'm not being super heavy with this. Uh, can you see the difference? I did this part, but I did not do this part. Do you see the difference in? how the distressing just adds a little more of a vintage look, a vintage vibe, an old world vibe, and I like it. Your napkin is so much more stable on the piece of paper once it's glued and varnished on, decoupaged on. Okay, I've got all that done. I'm gonna set this aside for a minute so I can put this on my table and lay it flat. I would like to add a little bit more of that. I'm going to put a little piece of paper behind it. I'm going to hold it down flat. And with this little thing, I'm going to come in. I'm drawing. I want to draw some of the color into more of the napkin, not just the flicking the edges, 
but more into the actual design. And actually, I know this looks counterintuitive, but if I give myself some crinkles, some crinkles and wrinkles, I'll have some high spots for that applicator to hit and grab onto so that you're getting, you're grabbing those little wrinkles with the color. It's gonna make it look more decrepit <laughs> if that's what you want. I want it to look, I'm just, I have not re-inked it. I'm just kind of pushing down and grabbing what's left of the color and just mucking up the rest of it. You can really notice it here in this section right here that we kind of hit the wrinkles and really got them to really showcase. Oh, I love it. Super cool. I may even hit these a little bit. Nothing too faint, no, nothing too wild here. We're not going too bold. But the parts that are going to show, I'm going to hit them with a little bit of this. Now this one already has this dark edge, so I'm not going to worry about that side. Going straight for me. Okay. And we can start gluing it down. I think we're in good shape for that. Just a little clean up here. Get rid of some of these excess pieces. These will not get thrown out. Even this little piece, I will save it. It'll go in my probably in my phone book. Here's our board. You get to decide how heavy you want to be with these little pieces or how light. I don't glue anything down until I'm confident that it's the way I want it, okay? Because you can still, we can still move things. We can still adjust. We can still move things. So this is what we're going for. Let's see. We have just this. Pull it out closer to the edge. I love that so much. Actually, I love it so much. Let's use this other piece. Let's not waste it. Debbie, you were just thinking about crinkling up that paper. It makes it look so decrepit. Ooh, makes me happy. Makes us so happy. Okay. I'm going to add more of this a little further in this way. I better. Muck it up a little though. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Okay, whichever way you feel happy about the way it's sitting on your project, you're gonna start gluing it down. This one here is feeling really too neat. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull out some of the, I'm gonna put give this one a little fringe, just like the one down here has. I really like the fringy look. So we're just pulling out some of those strands so that the fringe shows. Here, you can see that fringe. When you pull out a strand, you just get more fringe. You're just gonna, from the bottom, pull out one whole strand. <laughs> it gives you more of that. So I know that's gonna go on the very corner right there. Um, so I can start gluing down. I probably will use just, let's see, what do I wanna use for glue? If I can get my art glitter glue out, that would work real well. As would either our glitter glue or a fabric tac would work really well because you know the fabric tac is going to be clear too. So I know I want this piece right on this corner. Let's see if I can if I can get this. Oh my gosh, Ruth, you're cracking me up. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. Listen to Ruth. You guys read Ruth's comment. I'm gonna put it up on this on the uh, in front of the screen while I'm trying to get my glue undone. Oh my gosh, Ruth. Ruth, I was using your quote, girl. I told everybody we adopted your, your um, phrase for the year. <laughs> we adopted your phrase for the year, use more in 2024. Oh, we did it the wrong way. I want it this way and I want it close to the edge. I want it close to the edge because I want to see as much of that sparkly um, burlap as possible. Now, if this is sitting here, I'm just focusing on this one edge right now. Why do I have such a straight edge there? I think because I'm hiding it, yeah? Yes, I'm hiding it. It's gonna go right here. So once I find where I like it, I just try to hold it with one hand and then with the other hand, use your glue to put it down. You heard us. Ruth, I didn't know if you'd been here when I said that. You are out to lunch with your hubby and you both have an earpiece in. You probably look like a couple of secret agents. <laughs> like you were for the CIA or something like that. Oh my gosh, that is a crack up. And he's listening to March Madness. And you're hanging out with me. What an honor. What an honor. Tell your hubby we all say hello. 
you all say hello. All right, we're trying to get this one to stick down. Stay down there, dude. Put something heavy on it. Come on. Okay. Um, I know that this one is where I want it. This one's pretty much where I want it too. So I'm going to start gluing this one down as well. It's just on the upper right. It like is basically mimicking the shape of your, your board. So I'm just going to put a whole bunch of glue here and see if we can't get this down. There. Perfection. And then where did I want my paper on this corner? It's going to be really prominent, my paper. I'm going to, wow, I made my fingers brown. Good gravy girls. Good gravy girls. It's almost noon. Um, so for those of you that are, maybe we can use a combination of glues. Those of you who are in the craft therapy club, if you are planning on hanging out with Kim as she's doing ham lettering, make your way over to the craft therapy club. This is this. Well, you may be watching this in the craft therapy club because I'm broadcasting this on YouTube, on Facebook and in the craft therapy club. Kim will be live in three minutes in there doing the ham lettering for this month's project. Um, so if you want to be with her live, don't be afraid to bug out of this and you can catch the ending of this as a video recording our scheduling that's just the way it worked out yeah you know, it's just the way it worked out i don't know what else to say about that it's just the way it worked actually my um i'm having better luck getting my glitter glue out of the bottle so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna use that it will dry clear so it's gonna look white coming through my my burlap it's gonna look white and a little funky but i promise it'll dry clear i have several of these left. I think I was going to put this one in this corner. So I've knocked them all off as I'm working. I think I wanted one kind of in the middle here and then one on this corner. Did I? Is that how I was doing it? Let's see. So I keep placing it because I'm just super visual ladies. I just need to see what the heck I'm doing here. I like that like that. Yep. I want that there, or I might put this little bit right in here, like that. There's no right or wrong to this. It's just, I don't want to say it's willy-nilly, because it does matter. You do it, you keep placing them until you're happy. Um, you can do a lot of it. You can do a little of it. You can have it really poking out, or you can have it super subtle. I don't like to dictate that to you it's really um, a, a feeling it's really just what makes you happy like where when you put it down and you're looking at it and you have your little bits of paper and your burlap sticking out where it, where is it sticking out and it makes you happy that's that's what we're going for the joy factor where are you happy where are you happiest with this don't let anybody bully you into like it needs to be this far down here or it has to be here no it doesn't that's why I'm, you see me working my own papers until I'm happy. There's, I'm not, I can't give you a measurement for where to place these. That's collage is just fun. It's just fun to play with your supplies and play with the placement. And you will find as you're doing this paper collage, even if you're paper collaging in your phone book, like I do for tired crafting, you're gonna find that your mind gets kind of lost in the process. And isn't that a joy? Just kind of be distracted by something that brings you joy and something that makes you happy. That's what we're all looking for. It's a, little, a little joy and happiness to our day. I wish I had just a tad bit more of that paper, and I don't. Um, let me just check. I'm going into the garbage, girls. Did I throw a chunk out? Oh, I did. This little chunk. This little chunky chunk. I might just put... Another little chunk right here, popping out. Yep, right there, little blob, little chunk. Anywhere else, this is feeling rather bare down here. I'm gonna grab a little piece of this, a skinny little piece maybe. 
not much of one. Yep. <laughs> yep. See how easy? Don't overthink it. Don't just don't criticize yourself for making a choice of making an adjustment where you deemed you wanted to make an adjustment. I want you to feel totally free to do what makes you happy at the moment and seriously just enjoy the process without overthinking it too much. I have this little chunk left. This little layer. And actually, it is kind of cool to have these layers because it's pulling the the napkin itself. This this section of the napkin is going to be kind of raised up off of the board. It looks so funky like that. It looks so funky like that. <laughs> Doesn't it? Funky! But we're going to glue this down and it's going to look beauteous. You go really liberal here with the glue. If you enjoy paper collage, if you enjoy mixed media, if you enjoy gathering with other like-minded ladies and just hanging out and creating like this, you are a super candidate for our craft club. It's the only club that I know of, and I've been doing some research lately based on some of the answers that you gave me to the questions I've been asking here on the page. I've been researching some of the clubs that are out there, um, and I don't know of any other club that does as much creative content and fellowship swaps, challenges. Um, we have the craft box relay. We have the craft it challenge. Pro with, you know, these things come with, some of them come with prizes every month. I don't know of another club that does as much um, for as little because my, the club that I offer is just 15 bucks a month. So you would be a very good candidate if you like to do this together with people on a regular basis and we're in a private group would love to have you consider joining us those of you who are on the wait list i sent out a private invitation for you to join us um tomorrow that invitation is going to close so make sure that you take advantage of that invitational link that i sent you oh my gosh i love it i do love it so much you guys now a couple of things i'm thinking I wouldn't mind adding a little sparkle to this. Now, you did not get this in your kit, but if you have some sort of like, this is a sparkle pen. It's called a, what are they called? Does anybody remember what these are called? I threw out the packaging and it doesn't say on the pen. Spectrum, spectra, 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 spectrum, 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 noir is the brand and they come in different colors let me see if i can this one oh yeah that's right this one's gold but it looks very green so this is not the right one to use let me find my clear one there's a black one there's a clear one okay you can hear those balls running around so this one this is just a pen so it's just like those these water pens that i told you the sparkly liquid sits in the barrel you squeeze it and it comes out the brush um, it's the same design as that. If I can get the darn cover off, why can't I get the cover off? It's stuck, girls. Hold on, we need a tool. I need, my fingers hurt when I try to do that because I'm one of those people with finger pain. So I'm going to see if, if my kids were here, I'd say, Landon, open this for me. I can't open it, girls. Isn't that awful? Isn't that awful? You can, I said to my husband, my fingers look like sausages. They're so swollen and my, my knuckles hurt. I can't get it off. That's what she said. If anybody walked into the office, you know what I'm talking about. I can't get it off. All right, I'm not using the Spectrum Noir because my fingers hurt too much and I can't do it. If you have anything sparkly, I think it would be really fun, like I have my stickles here, to add a little sparkle to some places on here. I have this one and I have some clear ones too. Um, let me grab a clear one because I might add some clear sparkle to the birdie. Yep. I think I'm going to sparkle up this section. His beak and then coming down his body. I'm going to add a little sparkle. I when I add a little I do like a little bit of shimmer on a project. I'm not super blingy. I never really have been. 
I like blingy projects. I like watching other people who use bling. But when I use a little bit of sparkle, for me, I really prefer incredibly subtle, like so that your eye has to like do a double take. Like, is there a little sparkle on that bird? Why, yes, there is. Take another peek. Yes, you can see it when you look in close. All right, let's do the gold. And I'm going to add the gold because the flowers down here have a little bit of yellow to them. So I'm going to outline these florals down here. They're like little flower buds. I don't know what they are. It's not a flower I've ever seen in nature. The artist, I don't know if these really exist in the world or if this is just the artist's rendition of a flower. I don't know, but I like them. So we're going to add just a little bit of sparkle. All I'm doing is outlining the outside edges of this flower. I'm not even doing the top and bottom, just the outside edges. I'm going to hold this up and show it to you. So I just used the tiniest bit of stickles, a clear one on the bird and a gold one on the flowers. Not necessary, but I love the look because we have our sparkly burlap is has got sparkle in it. That's what came in the kit was the gold infused um, burlap. And then I did add, you can see on the body of the bird and on the flowers, it's still wet, but I added just the tiniest bit. Just see her eye, like it goes, wait a minute. There's just a little bit of shimmer that catches your eye. It's nothing super bam. It's not like in your face. It's just there very subtly. And I love that look so much. Now, on this one, the original one, I had attached three little beads and a mini tassel to um, the corner edge of it. And you, I don't, I don't plan on doing it here on this one, but if you have, they have to be the tiniest little of beads, right? They have to be really little. Um, and I did grab the beads so I could show you. And actually these, strangely enough, I have some that are painted like a pale eggshell blue, which matches the fence on this. So if you wanted to do that, you would grab three little beads. You would grab your jute rope is what I use. Oh, I'm so glad you love it, Joyce. Oh, thanks, Chris Hunter. I didn't realize you were here. Hello, friend. So with the teeniest little bitty tassel you want to make, just two fingers, we're going to this will make our tassel, it's just gonna be a teeny tassel. And I'm using really skinny jute rope for this. Come on, I'm stuck in my, my little holder here. So we'll make our tassel first and I'm just using my two, the width of my two fingers. You make that tassel as hefty as you want it to be. Um, that's probably big enough for me. Is it big enough? When I flatten it out, it's gonna be that long. That is big enough. That is big enough. Yep. I just wanted to get my to my middle again. I used my scissors to find where my middle was. Okay. So we're gonna make the tassel. I think I I think I, I missed a loop there. I'm just gonna redo it real quick. Because I missed a loop. <laughs> I missed a loop. All right, you're gonna need. You got your tassel here. Here are your two ends. Your fingers are in the loop. You don't want to lose your loop. Like don't lose that spot. You need to know where that is. Grab it at the top. Your tails are hanging on the bottom. Grab it on the top. And actually you want a pretty good size lead here of the same jute rope. And we're going to tie this off. So put this in the middle at the top. I'll probably just go halfway and tie it. This is just gonna hold it together for you, okay? We're trying to hold it together here, girls. So we're just gonna tie that just like you would tie anything else. My fingers, I know they're just so swollen. I know they probably they look painful to me. They're all red and swollen. All right, we're gonna tie that off. That's the top of our tassel. And this is what we're gonna bead, string our beads through, okay? That's why you needed a big lead here, okay? So here is the rest of the tassel. Now we gotta get that part on the top. I know I cut another piece that might not be big enough. Give yourself another big lead, another big section. I don't measure. We're just grabbing a big section. 
and toward the top we've got to create that little section that holds the tassel together so i do a loop you guys is how i do it um, i loop i create a loop and then i'm going to use that loop to tie it in the end it's how i've i learned to do it and how i've always done it and it leaves no you don't have to use glue and the the tie is on the inside the underside of this wrapping not on the top so you don't see anything bulky and ugly on the top <laughs> it's basically what it does so you wrap it around as much as you want to get that tie on the top here is my original loop that i used and i i do show you guys in the craft therapy club if you're in there there is a live recording showing you slowly how to do this um, so now we're going to use that loop we're going to pull the tail of the loop it's going to pull that little knot behind your top behind your wrap so that nobody can see it which is really nice that this can become part of your tassel if you want it to that can cut, cut off completely and then there's your little tiny mini tassel and then we got to cut all our loops cut them the same size we get our tiny little tassel and then you're going to use these strings to string on your beads whatever the beads are that you want to put on there now i'm going to make these the same length so i can do it i'm going to try to loop both of them i think my beads the center of my beads are big enough to get both of these through yes they most certainly are so now you're going to have a beaded tassel it's not required. I'm not going to put it on my project, I don't think, but I did say that when I sold the kit that I didn't have enough of these beads to give to everybody. So I wasn't going to include it as part of the project, but I would show you. I'm going to use a little bit of glue on my fingers to make like almost a little needle out of the end of this. When you're working with yarn, embroidery thread, um, baker's twine all those things that unravel while you're trying to beat it just grab a little bit of glue and you know make a little needle out of the tip of that thread embroidery thread jute rope baker's twine that you're trying to get your through the middle of your beads it's the easiest way i've found to string while your your jute rope keeps trying to break up on you Okay, there we go. There's the little tassel. It is darling though. It's like the right colors, you guys. Seriously, that is so stinking cute. Maybe I will include it. I wasn't planning on it, but it's really cute. It's really cute. Okay. Now, when I did the original version of this, oh, where are my staples? When I did the original version, version of this, I had drilled a hole in my board. So I tied this tassel to the tie of the board. Okay, through the hole. I don't, there's no hole in this board. Let me see if I can find my, I think I'm just gonna, if I can do it, I'm just gonna staple it on there. It's mixed media girls, like there's no rules here. We don't have to follow any particular rule. I just would have to find my staples though if I wanna use them. Oh, you know what, actually another idea, I could use a bulb pin. That would be cute because it adds another, like a metal element to the project. We could do a bulb pin. <gasps> I love that idea. All right, I'm going to tie. First of all, how low do I want it? I'm going to tie a knot where the top of my paper napkin is in my jute rope. So like right about here because that's how high I want it to be. So I'm going to tie a little knot right here. That's going to give me a place to attach my bulb pin right? I'm just gonna leave this lead on here for now. But right there is my little knot. So I can put my bulb pin through through there, and then attach the bulb pin to my paper napkin. I'm just going to poke right through it. If you can get through your other layers, you could do that too. But I don't really need to get through all the layers. I just need to get through the paper napkin. Whoops. Come on, Gracie, you can do it. I had to get through the, <laughs> the glue and varnish. This felt a little like it was resisting me. Oh my word, that's cute. You guys, little bulb pin went through that corner, through that paper napkin. Now, I like it positioned. I am gonna cut these off a little short. I don't like them real long like that. I like this positioned 
where I can see both the top and the the top of it and the bottom. If if I let this go, it's going to slide down and we're going to be missing the top. I want it positioned right there. So make it, make it do it, girls. <laughs> force it to stay right there. How am I going to force it? I'm going to glue the back of this. I'm going to glue the heck out of the back of this. I didn't need my stapler after all. I'm going to glue the heck out of the back of this so that the pin stays exactly where I want it. So now my, my pin is underneath the paper and sandwiched in some glue. I've got some glue overage here. It's just like coming out. It's seeping out. It'll dry clear, but I'm going to try to wipe some of that away. I'm just pushing that paper right over that bulb pin so that it's glued down. And that way I can see both the top of my bulb pin and the actual bulb and my beads are hanging down just where I want them. Oh, I missed one little loop on my... Now I need to let that rest. I can't do a whole lot more with that because if I keep monkeying with it, the paper will dislodge from the pin and the glue. So I better just leave it be while it dries. I'm trying to make a clear spot so you can just see the project without all these extra things lying around like that. And then of course you got a big piece of jute rope. If you like to use jute rope for your hanger, once this is all dry and secured, you can attach this to the back. If anybody needs help with that, please ask. But I've glued that down so that we can see the entire bulb pin it. and there's no chance it's gonna move around once it's completely dry. What do you think, ladies? I hope you love it as much as I do. And if you grabbed this kit, enjoy creating it. Um, I will attach this video to the kit listing in my shop. I do that so that you can find the kit video. Once you've purchased the kit, it comes to you in the mail. Then you can um, come back to the website, go to the product link. I will share that product link in the in the comments again for you. I have six more of these kits. Um, if you're a Craft Therapy Club member, don't forget to use your exclusive code to get a discount on your kit. Everybody else, there's the kit link. You can grab a kit if you want to and then go back to the product link once you've gotten your kit and you can follow along with the video if you need the help following along to create it. Um, you may just remember on your own, just basically what I did here. Lots of layering, lots of fun with burlap and paper and glue and glitter and a little tassel. It's just darling. It's really darling. And the, the, the bits of glitter just make me happy. They just look at all that little glitter. It just makes me happy. <laughs> I hope it makes you happy too. And listen, I hope even if you don't do this project, whatever project you decide to do, whether you're doing an art journal page or working on a junk journal or a mixed media project, a napkin project, just go make something pretty that brings your heart joy. And thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you've gotten some value from what we've done today and you're willing to do it, please share this content out there. It helps us so immensely to meet new creatives and crafty chicks, tired mamas who want to do a little crafty fun. We welcome them all here to hang out with us. Again, thanks for being here, you guys. Have a blessed day. Bye.